Christ Church is a Calvinist church in Moscow, Idaho, pastored by Douglas Wilson, and a member of the Communion of Reformed Evangelical Churches. The congregation has received international coverage for its views, which include advocating for a theocracy in its pastor's defense of slavery in his teachings using the terms to conquer women and make them surrender to the supposed superiority of man. A school founded by Christ Church called the Logo School in Moscow, Idaho promotes classical Christian education. Like a number of other organizations affiliated with the church, Logos School is organized as a limited liability company. A number of former students of the school have reported that the school enforces modest dress, godly gender roles, prompt and cheerful obedience to teachers, and the prohibition of romantic relationships between students. Former students have also reported being sexually abused and touched by teachers, spanked by school administrators, and asked about their sexual activities by teachers at the school. In May 2021, a former student of the Logos School launched a project on YouTube to document testimonies of students who report abuse at the school. The project claims to have compiled allegations from 27 different students, and its organizers claim that doing so has resulted in them receiving online threats, such as a picture of a knife. Christ Church has garnered widespread attention due to numerous allegations of sexual assault, rape, and pedophilia within the church's congregation. Church leader Douglas Wilson himself has appealed multiple times to judge and police officers to ask for leniency for church members convicted of pedophilia. Douglas Wilson publicly asked for leniency in 2005 when Stephen Seidler, a student at New St. Andrews College, was convicted of sex offenses involving children. Following the student's release from prison, Wilson personally married him to a woman introduced to him by church leaders. Also in 2005, Greyfriars Hall student Hameen Wright, then in his mid-twenties, was put on trial following allegations of a sexual relationship with a 14-year-old girl. Church leader Douglas Wilson intervened in the case, asking investigators for leniency, and attempted to convince the judge in the case that the relationship between Wright and the accuser was a parent-arranged courtship. Ultimately, Wright was found guilty of injury to a child. In 2013, Wright was again arrested, and convicted of domestic battery. In September 2021, Vice Media published an article documenting a dozen sexual assault victims that came forward with testimony against Christ Church and its affiliated organizations. The article interviewed a number of ex-members of the church, who claimed that, women are told they must defer to church leaders and cannot say, no, to their husbands, Men are taught to strictly control their homes, and those who speak out can be isolated and harassed. Idaho's dunes of grains and grass, a battle without bullets over the direction of a town. I believe that what's happening in Moscow is a microcosm of what's happening all across the country that started here maybe 10 or 15 years earlier than what's happening across the country. And that is... Um, well, just the radical division. I don't think our nation has been this divided since 1859. It's divided and it's inflamed. And uh, that whole process, I think, began to be visible here a decade or a decade and a half before it became radically visible in the nation as a whole. Pastor Doug Wilson leads Christ Church in what he calls a Cold War Civil War. Our rights come to us from God and not from the government. Fighting in, of all places, a college town. Moscow, home to University of Idaho and just eight miles from Washington State University, exudes a live and let live vibe. One of the interesting things about Moscow is how these two entities live side by side, and I mean literally. Right behind me, that's the offices of the Christ Church. 
and right next door is the headquarters for the local Democratic Party. From this former art house movie theater, Wilson leads his campaign to make Moscow a Christian town. Idaho is a very red state. Moscow was historically a very blue dot in this red state. And so consequently, the fact that uh, we've done this has been disruptive in the minds of some, but the feasibility of um, um, evangelizing in Moscow had to do with the importance of the university and the size of the town. So in your version of a Christian town, would there be a place for non-believers? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Would, would yeah. there be a place for same-sex couples? But you mean legally? Yes. You, you mean like uh, marriage? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no marriage. But there'd be uh, same-sex couples. No marriage, even though it's the law of the land in the United States. Uh, just like Roe used to be, right? In my uh, belief system, in our doctrinal stand, and what we believe the Bible teaches, homosexuality is not only a choice but a sinful one. Yes. It is a muscular, masculine-led vision of Christianity. Scripture tells the man to provide, protect, and love. Scripture tells the woman to honor, help, and submit. Expounded on his show, Man Rampant. Men are going to be dominant no matter what you do. And articulated in his blogs. This one saying marriage is a little kingdom and the husband is a little king. A wife should be, should be submissive to her husband, as Paul teaches in multiple places, yes. So a wife should be submissive to her husband. But in the blog post that you just cited, uh, I made a special point of saying that the woman exercises authority over the selection of the one that she's going to submit to. So when you say wives should be submissive to their husbands, does this mean, why shouldn't they be equal? Um, well, because God created us a certain way. So we want to fit with the design. Former Mayor Nancy Cheney says the community has endured decades of Wilson's often incendiary ideas. When some uh, kind of outrageous statements were made uh, early on about uh, Southern slavery as it was, as a, as a mutually affectionate relationship between master and slave, or saying that members of our LGBTQ community, uh, trans people, should be exiled or possibly stoned, that catches our attention. Wilson says he was misunderstood, rebutting the many controversies on his website, writing he does not believe in the death penalty for homosexual acts or that slavery was a positive good. But the visible and invisible lines being drawn here and elsewhere across the country are setting off alarm bells for many faith leaders. Do you consider Christ Church a church? I don't. Really? I really don't. What is it then? Um, I, I see it as, a, as a, a dominionist cult. Reverend Dr. Elizabeth Stevens leads the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Palouse. In the public square, I don't see them representing Christianity. I don't see them representing the values that, that I find in the Bible. I see them representing patriarchy. I see them uh, fighting the culture war. Stephen's position in that war is visible for all to see, a stained glass rainbow chalice. Wilson fights with the printed word. A prolific author, he's written dozens of books, all distributed by his own Canon Press. It publishes more than a thousand different titles half of which are books and materials serving hundreds of thousands of homeschool and Christian students nationwide. Wilson laughs off the cult accusation, but the former Navy man embraces culture warrior. You can't have a naval warfare without ships, and you can't have tank warfare without tanks. And as I tell Christians all around the country, you can't have culture war unless you have a culture. Our tagline is all of Christ for all of life. So we want to be seven day a week, 24 hour Christians in everything we do. And a distinctively Christian culture is forming here um, and not reclusive and not cultic, but it's distinct. Here in Moscow, Wilson and Christ Church have built a multi-million dollar enterprise that includes a K through 12 school, a publishing house, a college and a streaming show. Pursuits that some worry will change the very character of this town.
What scares me is that he is making Moscow into a Wilson town. Keely Emerine Mix is a former pastor. What worries me is not that the stamp of Christ might be wrongly shoved down the throats of my, my neighbors here in Moscow, but that the stamp in the foot of Doug Wilson will be wrongly and is being wrongly crammed down their throats or standing on their neck. I think that his influence on this town has been despicable. Aubrey and Wyatt Knickerbocker met two years after her family moved to Moscow seeking a Christian town. We found what at first we thought was a very welcoming community. There was something every day, something new, some sort of baby shower or something for the school. You get very swept up in all of it. Until they heard this message from another pastor in the church. Women should wear women's clothes. They shouldn't wear pants. Shouldn't have short hair. Shouldn't have short hair. Shouldn't, um, men shouldn't wear earrings. No one should have tattoos. And then there was this, a psalm sing in the middle of the pandemic, protesting the local mask mandate, retweeted by then President Trump. That was when I realized that these were not people trying to spread awareness or trying to spread the good news of Christ. It was people trying to say, look at us, we are so oppressed. Did you feel betrayed when you realized that? How would you describe your feelings? Yes, very betrayed, because I've grown up in the Christian church, and it never occurred to me that a church could be wrong and how wrong they could be. They stopped attending Christ Church. Aubrey says she was attacked online. Now they actively avoid patronizing businesses run by church members. If it was another church that owned it and they just happened to have some beliefs that I didn't agree with, that, that's fine. But when you're hurting people, that's when you have really crossed many lines. Are you being judged on your faith rather than your product? I believe 100% that that's true. Josh Flickner says he came to Moscow seeking a Christian community and found it in Christ Church. But his business, Journey's End Cafe, is paying the price for where he worships. I really wanted this place to be actually a bridge builder in the community. And so, yeah, it's, it's really a bummer that, um, that a lot of people in the community are just so full of bigotry that they do not want to even try to build those bridges. He says his workers are threatened by crank calls and his future by a social media campaign calling out businesses run by church members. Look at what people say about my business and then pretend like I was not a white heterosexual Christian male. That would be a hate crime. Anywhere else in the country against any other type of person that would be a hate crime. Three weeks after this interview, Flickner announced he's closing the cafe. So how close is Wilson to reaching his goal of turning Moscow into a Christian town? Well, no one is quite sure, but everyone has an opinion. Honestly, it's almost laughable, only because you're talking about a minute percentage of the population. George Scandalos and Brandy Sullivan own restaurants and businesses on Main Street. As someone who was served on the city council, I haven't seen any traction gained in that area. There, the last two elections, there were some um, candidates who were members of Christ Church, and those elections were uh, very uneven. <laughs> and um, I would call it a landslide. Uh, there you go. In yeah. defeat, yes. You have 700 active households, about 2,000 church attendees. This is a city of 25,000 people is the way to reach your goal to bring in more people or to convert the hearts and minds of those who already live here it would be it would be both yeah we, we would want to persuade the people who are already here and we would we want to welcome the people who arrive here like many other churches, Wilson's deals with accusations of sex abuse, including a deacon this summer pleading guilty to a federal charge of child pornography, and Wilson marrying a released child molester to a church member. The thing that upsets people is not the child molestation offense, because there are 20, 30 sex offenders in Moscow, and everybody knows the name of one of them because of where he goes to church. Right? The ones who don't go to church, they're all okay. They stay out of the newspapers. But the one who is repentant and wants to live right and is, you know, 
uh, straightening, uh, straightened out. We're going to go after him because this is um, uh, because they're, the target is actually me. Wilson, if anything, seems energized by the criticism and attention and undeterred from his goal. Do you see expanding this microcosm from Moscow to the un full United States? Uh, it's hard. It's hard to envision how that might happen. I think it would be. I think it would be wonderful if it did. So, if there were a reformation and a revival, that's something we pray for regularly. And if what is happening here caught fire and spread elsewhere.